Good evening, welcome back to the channel. So in the last video, you guys had a number of questions about the Apple Vision Pro, and there's sort of a few reoccurring questions that I've seen circulating the internet. So in this video, I'm gonna rapid fire answer several of those questions. So let's hop right into the Vision Pro and go for it. So here we are in the Vision Pro virtual environment. One of the most common questions I saw from you guys is typing. What is it like to type? Is it difficult? Is it easy? Is it hard to see the keyboard? So to start that, the first thing to talk about are the different ways that you can type. So I'm gonna take this document here and I am going to bring it down in front of us. When I click here, my virtual keyboard pops up. A few different ways that you can type. The first way is you can take your index fingers and you can chip away like that. Second way is you can look at keys and then select just like that. Third way is I can look at the microphone, click it, and now I can start talking. And as you can see, as I'm looking at my document, everything is appearing what I'm saying very nicely. I click that again to unselect that. Fourth way is I can take an actual physical keyboard, connect it, and I can just type away as normal. So let's talk about the virtual keyboards first. So when I click in here, and I can take this virtual keyboard and I can position it wherever I want. So it's not like it's just stuck down here. I can put this wherever I want. But despite that, wherever it is, it's still a little bit difficult because when I'm going like this, I have to make sure I'm selecting the thing because there's no physical feedback that you're getting. So you need to be looking at it to select the right keys. If I'm clicking with my eyes, then I really have to make sure that I'm looking at the keys because if I stop looking at the keys, then I can't be typing. So yeah, using those two methods to type are not the greatest. They're not very fast. I would only use those in situations where you just need to type a little bit of stuff. Using the microphone, as you saw, this is pretty reliable. If you don't worry, if you're not worried about formatting, then this is a great way to do it. It's pretty reliable. It generally gets exactly what you're saying. But one of the best methods to do is to just simply connect your Bluetooth keyboard. Because when you do that, you can type just as normal and everything works out perfectly. A cool thing about your physical keyboard is that see this little bar up here? Wherever I put that, that bar follows it. Exactly like that, which is very, very cool. Another question was, can I actually see physical keyboards that you have connected? And yes, you can, because in these environments, if I fully immerse myself then I can't see any part of my real world, including my keyboard. I have no idea what I'm typing unless I position my hands exactly right. But no, I can't see my keyboard. But I can adjust how immersed I am, and then I can see everything just as I normally would. Or I can fully take out all immersion, but this way I can be in my little world and fully see my keyboard and my Mac keyboard, and I can adjust that to whatever degree I want. So yes, yes, I can very easily see the keyboard. Another question that people had is, can I have more than one desktop window? So right now, this is my desktop. I'm connected to my MacBook computer and I can move my mouse around. Can I have more than one window? No, you are limited only to this one window for your desktop. You cannot have multiple windows of your desktop around your space. All these other things that you see around me, these are all separate applications of the Vision Pro or technically iPad apps in some cases that are opened separately. And that's why those are there. You can only have this one. Going off of that, someone asked, what is it like to move the mouse between your desktop and your other apps? So I have my MacBook right here and I have my trackpad. So as you can see, the mouse is over here on the desktop. I can very easily just move it into the other apps and it displays as it would like a, a iPad mouse. And I can very seamlessly just bounce around between all my different apps there's no glitchiness as you move your mouse between these apps. Everything kind of just moves exactly how you would expect it to. And you can easily just bounce between the desktop and your Vision Pro apps very, very easily. Something to note here is that I am using the trackpad for this. This is the Apple mouse right here. And as you can see, it's connected to my desktop moving around, but I cannot go to any of the Vision Pro apps with the mouse. I can only do that with the trackpad. I have tried connecting the mouse purely just to the Vision Pro as well. And although it connects, it says that it doesn't accept input from this device as of yet. So I don't know if that's gonna be a future update, but as of right now, you can only use your trackpad to bounce up into the Vision Pro apps. Kind of piggybacking off of that is, what is it like to copy and paste between the desktop and the Vision Pro and vice versa? Well, generally it's pretty easy. Now there are times where it doesn't work and it seems to be a little bit glitchy. So let me show you this. Let me go up here into the Vision Pro. I am going to type the word cat. I'm gonna go down here and select it and copy that. And I'm gonna go into pages. Now, hit or miss, it sometimes pastes it properly. Let's see if it does today. 
And right now, for some reason, as you can see, I'm, I'm doing the paste and it doesn't work for some reason. However, in every other application I've tried, it does work. So if I go into Safari or Notes or whatever and paste, now all of a sudden cat's there. So I don't know if that's a bug or what's going on there, but every once in a while when I copy something from the Vision Pro, it doesn't paste into pages. However, if I copy something on the desktop and paste it anywhere in the Vision Pro, then it always does seem to work. And there you go. Someone else had a question about what is the movie experience like on the Vision Pro and how does it compare to the Quest 3? Well, let me show you. So right here I have Apple TV open and I'm, I can't play anything because of copyright, but I have an episode open paused on a single screen. If you go up here to the kind of the top left, you see this icon up here, if my eyes can properly select it. And you have a couple different environments. So this is the current environment I'm in. And I can select one, light or day, and then the screen moves up there, all the other screens disappear, and I'm kind of left with this cool ginormous screen. And then this shows up down here at the bottom so you can easily scroll between whatever section you want to be in. Now maybe even cooler than that is if I get out of this and I go back up here into this section, and then I go to cinema mode, then I'm put kind of in this big cinema-like thing. However, there's no actual seats, and you have a few different options in here. So up here where you see front row, you can select where you're at. So I can go, right now I'm on the balcony in the front. I can go to the middle, I can go to the back, and then the screen adjusts. I can also go down to the floor level, and the back, the middle, and the front. So that is what the movie viewing experience is like in the Apple Vision Pro. However, something to keep in mind is that each different service might have their own separate experience and environment. Like Disney Plus has a entire cinema in the Disney theater or something like that, which is pretty cool. I don't have Disney Plus subscription, so I can't show you that, but each different service might have their own environment to make it a little bit more special. All right, moving right along. So right now we are in a virtual environment from Apple. Someone had a question about if you can make your panorama photos your environment, unfortunately, at this point in time, you cannot. So right now, if I go into my Photos app and I just click one of these random things that says it's a panorama, and then I go up here and select it. So here is apparently the panorama. Now this is a terrible photo, so this is not an example of the quality, but here I am in it. Now, if I try to go out and go into the little bars, these are my options. So there's no option to set that as your sort of your, like your desktop photo or your environment. Next up is how long does the battery last on the Vision Pro? Well, it kind of depends what you're doing, but in general, you can figure that it's gonna last about two hours. Can I connect this to power and use it all day long? Yes, you can. You can plug it in right there and have it plugged in all day long and you can use your Vision Pro all day long without any issues. The next question that someone had was about accessibility and can you use the Vision Pro and control it with just your voice and where you're looking with your eyes? Now, I don't typically do this with my devices, so I'm not the greatest expert in this area and I'm sure there are a certain amount of bugs and kind of glitches with this, but I did find a way to do this. And if you go over to settings and you scroll on down a little bit to accessibility, tap that, scroll on down a little bit more to voice control, the top you can toggle on voice control and when you do this a little microphone shows up in the corner and it's constantly listening to you you don't have to say to speak to siri to get it to respond what you can do with this microphone is just start talking and saying what you want it to do for example if i want to open something i can say something like open music and then there it is it shows up and now let's say i want to close this without actually selecting it so i look at the x and then i say single tap and there you go. So there's a whole lot there, but the basics of it do appear to be there. And the next question is, if you have issues with the light seal, if you have issues with the cushion or it gets dirty later on, or let's say you wanna add in your optics and you need glasses later on, can you do that? Yes, you can very easily if you hop on over into the Apple store and then go over to accessories, scroll down a little bit to select the Vision Pro and then click all accessories. And then here you have the option to get a new light seal. It's 200 bucks, which is quite a bit, as well as a cushion that's $30. And then you can get optical inserts as well. However, I've heard mixed answers about the possibility that you may need a new light seal if you don't currently have optical inserts 
and you decide to get them, you might have to also get a new light seal. I'm not sure, they'd have to answer your question. Just be aware that might happen if you do do that. Someone else had a question about, as I move around and if I walk as I work, do I start to feel disoriented or do I start to feel off? And as of right now, my experience has been, no, I don't. Because I can see my real world around me and because it's very clear and there's no latency, I haven't experienced that issue. Now, typically with VR headsets or headsets similar to this, I do get extremely dizzy. So that's very, very rare for me. But because I can see everything, because the colors are pretty accurate and because everything has no very little latency, it seems to really help with that and you don't get disoriented. Now, the real world isn't perfect. It's a little bit blurry and a little bit off but the thing is because the screens and because the content that I'm actually looking at is so clear, you almost don't notice it because right now I'm not paying attention to the cabinets. I'm not looking at that. That's not my focus. My focus is on what's on my screen. I'm paying attention to writing this document or whatever I'm doing. I don't really care that the rest of the world is just a little bit blurry because naturally it would be blurry in my peripheral vision anyway. So no, I have not experienced any dizziness or disorientation from walking around in my workspace as I do that as of yet. And the final question is, can you use the Vision Pro in the dark? And the answer is, for the most part, yes, you can, but there are some things to talk about. First off, if you take something and you completely cover up the sensors on the Vision Pro, such as taking the cushion here and covering it over it, then you're gonna get a notification that it is covered or to make sure that nothing's obstructing it, and then you won't be able to use the Vision Pro. But for the most part, if you're just in a dark room, as long as it's not absolute pitch blackness, and you're just in a dark room and you don't have any lights on and maybe there's a little bit of light seeping in from outside, then generally I've had pretty good luck using the Vision Pro. I can still use all my apps. Typically I do get a notification that says it might struggle with tracking my fingers and my movements, but I'm still able to use it for the most part. All right, and there you have it. Those are a few questions about the Vision Pro. If you guys do have any other questions, feel free to put them down below and I might do a secondary video to this first one about some common questions that people have. If you liked it or if it helped you at all, please give the video a thumbs up, consider subscribing, check out my other videos about the Vision Pro that I did. Thank you for being here and watching and I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your night.